I got my hair cut in Brooklyn. And now I look like Kurt Cobain. So. Just let y'all know from now. I plan on acting funny next week. When I get my Well, it's next week. And I don't know if I'm finna be acting funny later. Y'all New York City stylists stress me the hell out. Cause now I gotta figure it out by 9 a.m. tomorrow. Where's your gloves? They really said off my fingerprints. I'm burning that shit right off. My hands are burning just looking at it. Ever since I came to New York City, I've had to wash my hair every second day. It's like there's something in the water or in the air. Maybe it's cause there's a heat wave. I'm thinking that's the main reason. But I've been to LA and Miami during the summer and I never had to wash my hair every second day. Can someone please explain to me? Is it just me? Hello, this is Julia. This is a hair update. I'm an influencer in Brooklyn. And you'll notice my hair is wet. I only blow dried my bang. because who has time for this? I just took a shower. It's, you know, it's late. I gotta go to bed. I gotta wake up early. Anyway, like, are you supposed to put conditioner in your hair? Are you supposed to put product in your bangs? Like, I don't, how do they work? Are, also, are you supposed to trim them all the time? Like, starting to look like crooked and, uh, I'm growing into them. I'm gonna wake up and it'll look all tussled and cute and, you know, I'll be like, hey, I'll own it, you know, be proud of the stupid haircut. But I need help. I need help. Hey friends, welcome back to the channel. Thank you for clicking on another video. So you know we're working our way through this series. We're still in New York. And as I said before, I had to split New York up because there's just so much going on in New York. New York's so big, there's so many people. The one thing I can say that I've noticed while I've been doing New York is that New York is a little different from other states. As I've been going through different states, I noticed that there's more at-home stylists, nail techs and such in other states than there are in New York. New York has more salons, more establishments that are doing the services. So in that way, I thought that it would be a little more professional. But it seems that, you know, the business owners in New York know there's a lot of people. There's a lot of things going on. So it seems like they're just giving whatever service they want to give. <laughs> you know, I've always had the um, thought that people in New York, you know, they they going to give you what you get pretty much. Not what you want. You're going to get what you get. <laughs> So these videos have almost proven that to me. If you're from New York, let me know. Let me know. Are we wrong? Do these people have it all wrong or is that what it is? So let's get into the video and I'll be back. So sick and tired of these Brooklyn hairstylists. Always with the inconvenience and the bullshit. I'm a hairstylist myself and I would never treat my clients the same way. I had booked this appointment with this girl for 12 o'clock. I've been texting her for two days straight, asking her, like, am I able to bring my wig in the same day because my wig was not arriving? She did not respond to me till this morning. And she said, hey, yeah, you can bring the wig. I told her, I said, I'm going to come braid it. The wig is blonde. You just got to bleach it and install it on my head. That's it. Can take you less than two hours. I get, she tells me, oh, can I come early? And I tell her, like, I don't really think I could come early because of where I live. And I'm super, super far from her in Brooklyn. And I live in Long Island. So I'm like, I'm going to try my best because you're telling me this within an hour. You're telling me to come at 11 and it's going on 10 something. Like, so I'm like, I could try my best. I get here at 12 o'clock. Her grace period is 10 minutes. And grace period is 10 minutes. And your appointment is canceled after 15. I'm literally, like, trying to find her suite because half of these suites are all in freaking warehouses or whatever the case may be. So I'm going to, the, like, I literally got there before um, her grace period was off. I woke in. She tells me, oh, your appointment is canceled. I'm like, my appointment is canceled. What are you talking about? She's like, it's canceled. It's um, 12, 11. I'm like, your appointment is canceled after the 15th or whatever. She's like, yeah, I can't do it. I have somebody at 2 o'clock after you. So why do you have appointments on your site if the person comes and you cannot do it? So I'm telling her, I'm like, you don't have to braid me. You don't have to bleach my knots. Like, you don't have to do none of that. Like, you literally have to pluck my wig and glue it on my head. Like, I won't even get the hairstyle I want to get. Like, you could literally just straighten the thing on my head and I'll style it myself. She's telling me no. And she's over here trying to find other hairstylists. Obviously, no other hairstylist that could do my hair. Like, 
And it's just like, I'm so irritated because I literally been trying to book this girl forever. Like when I tell you forever, try to book her. And then I finally get an appointment with her last minute. I'm trying to contact the girl. The girl got no contact information. I'm literally about to cry because I had a wig on my head. I had a brand new fresh install on my head. And I literally wanted to change my wig for the concert. And I took the wig off. I would have never took the wig off if the girl was going to cancel my appointment. And that's why I'm so upset about it. Because it's like something told me like, keep the wig in your head but i'm like nah i'm gonna take it off because if I, if she in a rush or whatever and she already told me like oh um i can still come to the appointment or whatever like why would i come with a wig on my head like because i know my clients do that i'd be looking at them funny like why are you sitting in my chair with a wig on your head my wig was mad glue like when i tell you i had to pull that shit off my head and the fact that she canceled my appointment while i was standing there is crazy and not even try to accommodate me try to like nobody's able to do my hair like i really don't understand like why every time that i want to get my hair done from somebody it's inconvenience it's a problem like this happened on my birthday the girl gave me a hard time trying to do my hair trying to cancel my appointment when i got there on time just because she didn't want to do it and it was just given she did not want to do my hair because she wasn't doing nothing like when i came in she was dying somebody's wig and it's just given like why would you have an open slot on your appointment for somebody to book and you really knew that you didn't have time to do it like if you cannot glue a wig pluck a wig and glue it down on my head in two hours like i think that you should not be a hairstylist and it's just that you like oh i have somebody at two o'clock and i have to go to school at five o'clock well then you need to push their asses back like it's given that their appointment you're not even done with their wig that's why you didn't want to do my appointment that's why you asked me to come earlier and i just feel like as a hairstylist if you ask somebody to come early and they can't come early and you want to cancel the appointment that's on you like the only reason why I can't argue her down is because she did give me my deposit back, but it's still an inconvenience because now my hair's not done. Put your finger down if your hairstylist is almost two hours late for her appointment and you still have yet to hear back from her and you paid a $53 deposit and you were told that you had to pay a $50 squeeze-in fee because you booked last minute and um you woke up at 5 a.m to drive an hour from jersey to brooklyn and she works out of her home so she probably doesn't give a f that she's sleeping comfortably right now and um you still have to contain yourself because you're gonna look like the bad guy for um beating someone up because um your time is not valuable as much as theirs and they're allowed to cancel your appointment if you're late and you're not allowed to get in com accommodations because they're late and yeah just put your finger down yes i know it's ugly come with me to get a haircut i always go to the same exact place ying ying salon on 24 eldridge street it's a chinatown barber actually it's a salon it's for women but i've been going there since i was mad young so i kind of just always go there no matter what and it's only ladies that only speak chinese and i don't speak chinese i'm abc so it's always a good time too what's up matthew like your hair good so i don't really speak chinese and these ladies only speak chinese so whenever they're talking to me i have no idea what the hell they're saying oh, and then i end up with this bullshit. Matthew. She's violated, bro. Bro, there's like nothing, bro. She thinned it all, bro. Look at this shit, man. She fucked me up, bro. I'm so serious. She really fucked me up. You can see in this video, I'm so tight. A second away from cursing out the lady. <laughs> so bad. Dude, I'm actually fucking pissed. What the fuck is this, bro? This is even worse than last time. It couldn't get any worse. I was so thin. Bro, she fucking violated, but I have no hair. I have no hair! She took away all my hair! Yesterday was one of the worst days of my life, and let me tell you why. So, a little over a year ago, I dyed my hair to its natural color, which is kind of like a light brown. Um, and I did that because for most of my life, I had been dyeing my hair pretty much bleach blonde. And it had damaged it so severely, all my ends were dead, and my hair started to fall out. So I have waited over a year to do anything to my hair. I barely put heat on it, maybe twice over the course of the entire year. Um, I took really good care of it. I was putting masks in it. I was taking medication. I was doing everything I could to heal my hair. So my family has had this trip to Germany planned for months. And my mom decided that she would 
give me a gift and fly me to New York before Germany so that I could get my hair done at a special place that takes care of damaged hair. So I had been looking forward to this appointment for months. Two days ago, I went into the salon and this woman promised me the world. She said that everything she had was um, organic, ammonia free, sulfur free, that she's not gonna damage my hair, she won't put heat on it, promising me a lot of things. Throughout the appointment, she was saying things to me that were just awful, saying people like me dress like sluts, People my age are parasites that need to be taken off the planet. At this point, I thought maybe she's crazy, but she's good at hair, but I knew something was wrong. Midway through the appointment, I realized that my hair was going to turn out nothing like the picture I showed her. So for reference, this is the picture that I showed her. I'm having a hard time even talking about this because I'm so embarrassed by what she did to my hair, but better now so so this is how i left the salon that day not only did i leave the salon looking like a zebra she told me that she was gonna put curly hair keratin on my hair that puts keratin into the hair to strengthen it and she put straightening keratin in it that took out keratin from my naturally curly hair so now it's straight she knew she did something wrong and told me to come back the next day so that she could look at it. The next day it looked even worse because the keratin makes it greasy and you could just see the stripes. Here are some other pictures I took. As you can see, there's about 10 different colors in my hair, none of which I asked for. I asked to be a brunette with highlights and she turned me blonde. Okay guys, so I did not even want to come on here and bring this to TikTok, but at this point I am literally like so upset, I'm so mad. So I went to this new girl and she did my extensions and like, if you would have told me you don't know how to do weft extensions, like fine. Four days later, the first time I washed my hair, all of it falls out, all of it. This is what it looked like after four days. She then charges me a thousand dollars for these extensions, which is like double the price I normally pay. Literally, she charged me a thousand dollars for what? She did not even blend this hair in. She has little, she has rubber bands in my hair. You do not put rubber bands. First of all, she ruined my extensions. It's brand new hair, like I just paid for it and they're completely ruined. And then my hair is literally falling out. This is so all in all, I now look like a naked mole rat. Back with an update from my hair horror story. As a recap, this girl did my extensions and they literally fell out like this in four days and she charged me $1,000. On top of that, it left my hair falling out in chunks. I texted her and called her out on social media and all it did was get me blocked. I still have not been refunded my $1,000. So I took all of your guys' advice and contacted my lawyer, which is just my dad. The letter is just demanding a refund and it says if you don't comply, we're going to take you to small claims court and you're also going to be responsible for the thousand dollars of extensions you damaged and my hair, which is falling out in chunks. Hey y'all, it's a beautiful day today, but I came on here to talk some stuff because I am just so tired of these unprofessional stylists, these unprofessional people. Like, I feel like we talk about these unprofessional people all the time on TikTok, and I'm just like, oh my gosh, like, this is so crazy. I be seeing raw reviews, and I feel like, damn, like, people really acting like this. Like, people just really lack decorum and respect and things of that nature. So I finally experienced it, and I'm like, wow, I have to really express my myself and tell y'all like this is crazy and i know i'm not bucking because as someone who wants to be a business owner their self i'm not coming on here to be like oh like you know talk bad on this person but this experience was not a good experience and it was very nasty and disgusting you know what i'm saying okay now let's get to the story so i booked this girl to do my wig store for eve Eid is now announced to be on Wednesday, but I thought it was supposed to be on Tuesday. But either way, I thought booking Monday would be a good time to book so my hair gets to be fresh, clean, and crisp. Okay, I booked this girl at 9 o'clock today, 9 a.m. She then texted me at 3 a.m. saying that she cannot take me at 9. Can she push it back to 10? I'm like, okay, cool. Push it back to 10 a.m. Whatever, granted. Um, push it back to 10 a.m. Cool. So now, she pushed it back to 10 a.m. She was late. 
she was mad late. I get to the shop at 10.05 because, again, I live next to the shop. So, I'm like, okay, I don't got to rush, travel, wake up mad early. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's good for me. Mind you, my wig is already dropped off. Everything should be good, you know? I'm not thinking nothing of it. I'm not thinking the worst of the worst. So... I texted her like at 10 05. I'm like, hey, I'm at the shop. Um, the shop is closed, the gate down. Like, what's up? She texted me late, like 10 minutes after, like, sorry, I am 15 minutes away. Why did I text you and call you off Instagram to let you know that I'm here and you have to let me know that you're late? You're like, you knew you was running late. You should have been told me. Number one red flag. Okay, cool. All right, cool. So then after she said she's 15 minutes late, 15 turned to 20, 20 turned to 30. Like, all that was just pissing me off. Like, it was pissing me off. So after all that waiting, I waited until 1040. I waited 40 minutes. Then she comes out her Uber. She see me. She didn't even speak to me. She just opened up the shop and walked in. I'm like, wow. Like, I got, this got to be a skit. Like, am I being punked? So then I walk in the shop. And I'm like, hi, you so-and-so? She's like, yeah not know hi are you so and so i am so and so um you could get seated right here i'll be i'll be writing in a couple minutes let me get myself together you know communication but like, granted i did have attitude my face probably was a little scrunched up but who wouldn't be upset after you push my time back then you was 45 minutes late then didn't inform me until i had to text you then you wasn't even letting me know you was 45 minutes late you said 15. okay so I just sat myself. I just sat myself at this point. I sat down. So then I see she's by the sink. So I'm like, wow, my wig is not even customized. So then after all this, she finally told me to get seated, put the wig cap on my head, put the glue on my head, and I came already braided because just something in me just knew. You know what I'm saying? Just my intuition just knew that it, like just to come braid it. I saw I braided my own hair last night just for once to kill time and because i like my braids a certain way and the way my hair is right now is just too much and i hate when people tell me about how my how bad my hair is when they braided my hair like you don't know what's going on with my hair so don't tell me nothing about my hair so i braided my own hair she sat down put the wig cap on boom i'm already planning on telling her in my head like i think she take money off because on your on your booking site it says 15 minutes late you're gonna charge 30 dollars you was a whole 45 minutes. Take that $30 off my, off my, off how much I'm supposed to give you. Like, what? So now after she slicked my edges out, put this on, put this on, she's sitting down next to me, like, on the couch, and I'm sitting in her chair. I said, excuse me. I'm like, hey. Then answer me, ignore me. I'm like, excuse me. She like, I said, I think you should take money off my service because you was 45 minutes late. I have a whole video of what I'm saying. I was being real nice, real respectful. I was not even being rude, nasty, nothing. Because you know what I'm saying? Like, people could be going through their own shit. And you know, sometimes the way you approach somebody or how you go about things could be wrong. So although I had an attitude and I was really pissed the fuck off, I was still trying to be nice. And I feel like she's still trying to get a little crazy with me. But I was not having that. I was not having that. So I will insert the video. So then after that, she ends up leaving after this conversation and I'm just like, where she went? I looked out the door because I'm thinking she just stepped outside to talk to whoever. Because I'm, you know, you know, if she got to tell whoever she got to tell, that's your business. I don't really give a because I'm talking shit too. I'm telling my homegirls what the fuck is going on because I'm pissed the fuck off. So then she steps outside and I'm looking, she's not even outside. And I look again, I see her walking down the block with, 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 with a bag. Like she went to the deli, went to go get food and all that. Like then you have me sitting in there, then inform me like, hey, I'm going to go get food. You know, no communication, bad etiquette, bad community, bad community service, bad customer service, just bad. And your attitude is disgusting, like disgusting. So after that, because in the video I won't insert, she said, you can take your wig because I'm not giving money off. Like, and that's another thing to which I hear stylists. Y'all be too money hungry. And that is so f***ed up. Like, you was 45 minutes late with a nasty ass attitude. I'm trying to tell you about yourself. Because look, even though I'm supposed to post this video, I told you to your face. Okay, I told you to your face. And not only did I tell you to your face, I'm going to post about it. Because this is how I feel. Like, what? So... Cause this is my story i feel like i'm a victim <laughs> like bro what so then after she came back i'm like i'm gonna just take my way because again it, it was unsettling for me to sit there let her do my hair the energy was just not there so i'm like i don't feel like give you my money and i don't want you doing my hair 
And then that was that. And I ended up leaving like, wow. So this is how I'm walking around. Yeah. And I got work at too. So I don't know what I'm gonna do. Crazy. I don't make TikToks, but I need to do this as a PSA to all New York girlies who wanna get their hair done for the holidays and look all cute. I just had the worst, worst hair experience in my life. So basically I go to a salon after you know, Googling reviews, you know, checking out this woman's Instagram page. And then I'm like, all right, book an appointment. Um, you know, we do the whole thing, blonde highlights. I tell her, show her a pic. This was the pic I showed her, by the way, I'll put it on the screen. Um, and so I kind of show that pic and explain, I want that sort of like uh, lived in creamy, blonde, bright, buttery, um, almost platinum-y towards the end sort of look. I did a really good job. She got me there. I was my dream blonde and I was so happy. Mind you, it was five hours in a salon. It was nightfall by the time it was done and I was really eager to go home. Um, so I don't know if I, I sort of like noticed it, but I didn't know if it was like the lighting up top, but I was like, my roots um, look a little orange, um, but I left. And then I spent the next week kind of staring at myself in the mirror and being like, is it me? I don't know. And then I was like, I, it's true. My roots were orange. I had like an orange stripe. And I was a brave, brave girl. And I sent her a message and a pic and I was like, hey, um, can this be fixed? Maybe a little bit of toner. Uh, first she recommended blue shampoo. I tried it, didn't work. Then I came in, she said, um, she can fix that for me. Um, I thought it'd be like a quick, um, maybe one to two hours at the salon. Nope. Four hours later. Um, and like three different sets of toners later, I leave the salon with like the worst hair ever. It was literally silvery gray, blue, so ashy, so dull, so overtoned. Um, and the worst part about this is when I kept saying, like after each toner, each washout, I was like, no, what is this? This is not the same color that I walked in with. They were just gaslighting me the whole time, like just looking at different lighting. I'm like, no, my hair is literally gray. Like, what is this color? It's horrible. I left completely pissed off. Now I've spent five hours in the first time, four hours this time. And also I spent nearly $600 with tip um, on that, you know, blonding session. I, I messaged her and I was like, Look, I just think the issue is now my hair is very overtoned and ashy. Is there a way to like brighten it up? Maybe, you know, add some money pieces in the front or something to like bring back that color, You're, like washing me out here. And it's also like a million different shades of silvery green blue. Uh, she was like, yeah, you know, I want to make you happy. Uh, come in first thing tomorrow morning. Okay. I mean, I guess, you know, I don't want to be stuck like this. And also I had an event to go to. And I was like, I don't want people to see me like this. I'm you know, ready to go in at nine. She says, can we actually do it at 11? I'm like, okay, fine. Uh, and then at 1030, she texts me and was like, Hey, I've been thinking, you know, that at this point your hair might be too brittle. Um, and I don't want to damage it. I would recommend using like a K18 mask. I'm just like, bitch, you're just recommending now after I've spent $600 and so much time here to buy an $80 mask from Sephora and use it. I've already been using the K18 literally since June. So, you know, I've already been doing this. Oh, and she also recommended washing my hair with Dawn as a way to get some of that toner on it. I'm like, you are the one who destroyed my hair. And I was like, well, the only way we can get this right now is if I get a refund. Um, and then she was like, I can't grant any refunds, but here is my manager's number. I call the manager up and he tells me that it's against the salon's policy to, you know, give refunds, but your next few sessions will be complimentary until we can make this right and make you happy. Um, he also invited me into his salon in another location, um, saying that the one that I went to is kind of, um, you know, they don't have the best hairstylist there, which I'm like, what? Um, he was like, yeah, it's not the best talent there. We have better ones at, at this one. And I'm like, okay. Uh, now I'm just pissed off and my hair is ruined. And he also said that it won't take, you know, four or five hours, like the last few sessions. And I'm like, okay. Anyway, it still took four hours and a uh, girl was doing my hair. He was there the whole time. And, you know, I show her the picture again. I've showed her now, you know, what I want and what's happened. She tells me, you know, my hair is too damaged. She can't do a bleach wash on it. She can't do much on it because it's so damaged now. And there's breakage and it's already brittle. And she's also recommending K18 and other masks. And maybe in a few months, they can get it to the place that I want it to be. So moral of the story is now four hours later, I'm like, literally she shows me the hair and I'm like, it, it was a little better like not, this is the final hair it's like this I'm trying to show the light it's like this more golden color but I hate it I hate this color I hate that it's like this weird like goldeny nudity blonde it's it doesn't look good on me I don't like it at all and now 
$600 down the drain, um, almost like 15 hours of my time uh, down the drain. And now my hair is damaged beyond repair. And now I just have to wait it out a few months. And do I even want to go back there? Do I trust them? I don't think so. So yeah, that's my story. And do not uh, go to a stylist that you find on Google. Bye. Let me tell you about the worst hair spa ever, ever. All right, so to start off, I had knotless braids in my hair. So I was working on taking those out the night before and I combed out my hair and combed it out the next morning. This is all of my hair, combed it out so that it had no problem. I put it in a tight bun, so it'd be easy for them to do. All right, so we head to the hair spa, which is in Queens, New York. Do not come here ever if you're a person with ethnic hair, okay? So this is the hair spa you do not go to because it was terrible like i wish i could go back and tell this girl run run out the door because it was a hot mess at the hair spa they just shampoo condition steam your hair but you know for any type of hair especially if curly hair you just condition and comb out the hair really well but it just really got me mad because they promote that they could do all type of hair but clearly not because she did not comb out my hair at all and i'm really enjoying the process here like i'm like okay cool yeah she knows what she's doing no no, I really wish I just ran because you will see the fear when I'm looking in the mirror when I notice that they completely matted my hair. Like completely. Look at the knot, okay? It's not even a knot. It, it's matted. It's locked. This is part two of the catastrophe. Each ball you see in their hand is a matted knot. But we have to go to dinner. So that bun is a knot on my head. Like, look at these things. They're so matted. At this point, my hair, they already cut it a little bit um to free up some of the knots so you can see my hair is so uneven and they're just trying to get the knot as low as they could so when they chop it it's like some type of length um after spending two hours in the salon trying to work on it we worked on it at home for a bit this is it after we got all the knots out my hair is super thinned out thank goodness for my aunt's hairdresser that was able to come last minute and cut my hair in some type of shape that looked decent my aunt went to work blew it out for me the wine was very needed and it's now giving tina linda whoever it's giving bob's burgers all right like i have nothing to my hair look how thin it is short i'm trying to make the best out of it styling it but this was the worst experience ever and i am scarred for life i'll never go back to a hair spa i'm so tired of the hair salons in america Please tell me if I'm wrong. So I go to this hair salon to give Pagliacci a little bit of light. My hair is dark, but I like to add in a little bit of light to make it not look so dark. The whole thing costs about $400, including tip. And that's actually good because most of the time is $500. Tell me why they told me that if I wanted to get blow out because it's extra. I'm like... So if I don't get blow out, which is extra, you guys are going to do balayage and hang light just send me home with my hair wet or something like that. Like, what are you guys going to do if I don't get the blow out? I just laugh it off. I was like, haha, are you guys going to send me home wet, my hair wet? At the same time, I didn't care because every time I get a blow out, they're not that good at it with my hair type. I would prefer to go home and do it myself instead of paying like, what, $100? Like, aren't hair salons supposed to make you feel pretty? Like, you go there, you go your, what you need to do, and then you end up looking pretty and you go home pretty. Like, since one is all about the money for every little thing, especially if they're charging so much already for what you're getting done. So am I wrong for thinking that's wrong? And no, they didn't send me home with my hair wet like I thought. Because the lady had to do the color so many times, so, and I was there all day. So she made it look as nice as she could. The whole situation was like. Okay, hey y'all. So I'm in the mood to talk today. And I owe y'all story time about my baby shower day. But um, this is basically like a raw review for a hairstylist in the Bronx. And um, I actually already sent it to raw reviews. So if y'all want to go and check it out. But her name is V's on the story studios on Instagram. But all I'm going to say is this is why you need to be careful booking with these home base, these little um, Instagram girlies. Because first of all, let me tell you, my baby shower was June 21st, Friday, right? I made an appointment for 11 a.m. I booked with this girl May 31st, almost a whole month in advance, right? Sent her the deposit, $30. Cool. 
we was in contact the whole time till like june 21st you know i was hitting her up asking her stuff or whatever i never got a confirmation email but the day before she sent me the address so that was pretty much confirmation like i'm okay you know i'm gonna see you tomorrow whatever it comes to june 21st friday 10 30 around 10 30 i was already on my way i hit her up like hey good morning love you know i'm on my way and stuff no answer still no answer I get there, I'm hitting her up, I'm calling her, no answer, nothing, y'all. Like, when I tell you this girl left me in her inbox, I was blowing up her phone. I even called the number that I zelled the deposit to, everything, like, no answer. Because she sent me the address, but no apartment. Y'all, when I tell you I was ready to knock on every apartment, but I had other shit that I needed to do that day. Like, you literally messed up, like, she didn't mess up my day because, thank God, my cousin, Dejana, y'all go check out her page she came through and slayed my hair same exact hairstyle and everything but the point is i booked you paid your deposit you're not even answering me still to this day it's june 30th and i have not even received a apology nothing my refund nothing like and it just sucks because it sucks because if i wouldn't have no backup that day like on the day of my baby shower i would have had no hairstyle like nothing you know i would have had nothing done and i was dependent on that like which was crazy and i do want my thirty dollars back i was making a big deal about it but i'm gonna just wait till i catch that girl in person because how you do that and if you know june 21st that day it was 95 degrees outside blazing you had me outside waiting like in the heat I could have passed out anything on my baby shower day is insane like that was an important event and you didn't come through for me so I came to TikTok to let everybody know don't even book with that girl and if you have booked with her then I don't know she clearly does her friends only because I was a first time client and that was very bad first impression very freaking bad like let me tell you I was super annoyed that day it was terrible but I still came out looking beautiful and I will put in screenshots and look how and my final look of the day so she really didn't stop nothing but it's just the principle like you don't do that to a pregnant girl on her baby shower day at that and I still haven't received my refund or an apology or an explanation I just had the worst experience at a hair salon ever. If y'all live in Harlem, do not go to this hair salon right here. It's the day before Valentine's Day. I was like, let me go get my hair done. They opened at 8.45. I got there at like 9 o'clock, 9 something. I'm like, let me go get my hair done. I'm getting my hair done. Everything was fine at first. And I was vlogging for my YouTube too. Um, She washes my hair. She does the rollers. It comes time for her to blow out my hair. She's blowing out my hair, and then she finished blowing it out, and then I'm looking at my hair. My hair is still puffy, and it's looking horrible. Usually, I, I get my hair straightened sometimes, and after I get the rollers, and after I get it blown out, it's basically straight. So I was just confused as to why... And she used mad heat, too. The heat was too high. Multiple times I had to tell her, like, you know, the heat was too high. Like, it was so high, it almost made me cry. Like, the heat was too high. And sometimes when you put the heat too high, it burns the hair and it fries it to the point where it makes it puffy. So I tell her a few times, you know, the heat is too hot. And I'm like, maybe she doesn't understand me. So I go on Google Translate. And I put in Google Translate to English, it's too hot. And then I noticed that when she's doing, like, it's frying my hair to the point where the heat is too hot. So it's making my hair puffy. So that's why my hair was coming out puffy. She finished blowing it out. And I'm panicking because it's like, Valentine's Day is tomorrow. My hair looks crazy. And I know my hair straightens. I don't have four, like, I don't have, like, a rough texture hair. So I know my hair can straighten. She's like, oh, let me finish. Let me finish. So then she starts to straighten it with the flat iron. I'm like, okay, maybe let me let me trust the process. She straightens it with the flat iron. She finishes it. Then I'm looking in the mirror. I'm looking at my hair. It's still puffy. It looks crazy. And then I show her videos of my hair, how it looks when it's straightened, even when it's blown out of how it looks. So I know my hair could straighten. And she's like, um, 
oh, let me straighten it some more. Let me straighten it again. Straighten it some more. Straighten it again. I keep trying to put even more heat on my hair. That was the problem to begin with. Y'all was putting the heat too high, and I, I spoke up for myself, and I said, it's too much heat. All right, I'm like, whatever. Okay, I don't like it. So I'm like, okay, I'm ready to pay. I take out my card. Oh, no, we don't take card. It's not that y'all don't take card. Y'all just didn't want me to dispute the transaction. Okay, cool. I pull out a $100 bill. I give the lady a $100 bill. Keep that in mind. So I give the lady a $100 bill. If I wasn't planning on paying, I wouldn't have gave her the $100 bill. And then she's like, oh, we don't have any change. So she leaves the store, comes back. I end up missing my cab because she took too long. And I had to pay a fee for the cab I missed. She comes back. And I'm expecting her to give me my money so I could take the correct amount out and pay her because the bill that I had was too big. This woman is not giving me my money. I'm like, can I have my money so I could count all of my money and then pay you? You said the bill that I had was too big and you guys didn't have change. This woman is not giving me my money. Then a customer had to step in and say something. Then she finally like kind of gave in and gave me my, my money. I went like this and I took my money, counted my money, and then I paid her the $62. Then I'm like, oh, can I have a receipt? Oh, no, we don't have no receipt. No receipts. And for any service that you get or anything that you pay for, you're supposed to get a receipt. This lady did not want to give me my receipt. I do not like the way I was treated there. She did not want to give me my money. Probably thinking that I wasn't going to pay her. But if I wasn't going to pay you, I wouldn't have gave you the $100 to begin with. So now my hair looks ugly and it's messed up. And don't ever go to that hair salon. That's all I got to say. I'm done with Dominican hair salons. They always doing something. If it's not sneaking perm in the hair. I with me to get the cheapest haircut and blowout in New York City. I posted that video two months ago and I can't tell you how much I regret going to that hair salon. Yeah, it was a cheap haircut and blowout, but at what cost? I have not had a good curly hair day since this haircut two months ago. Before the haircut, my hair was so nice and long. You can see how far it went. I only wanted to trim my split ends, but it's been two months and this is how long my hair is now. So you can imagine how short it was originally after the cut. But the worst part is this. The haircut is asymmetrical. My left side is two inches longer than my right side of my hair. I didn't know that you're not supposed to cross your legs when you're at a hair salon. Usually when I'm getting my haircuts, the salon, they always tell you uncross your legs. I don't know why I thought it was just like it annoys them. I don't know. I learned the hard way. You're not supposed to cross your legs when you're getting a haircut because it makes your shoulders uneven. The guy saw that my legs were crossed and I'm sure he knew better, but he just didn't say anything. Even if he didn't know better, like then definitely don't go to that hair salon. I think he realized he cut more than I wanted and then just didn't cut the rest off the other side. I'm like my hair is my whole identity, honestly. I feel so insecure now. Good afternoon, TikTok. I just want to tell my story about, you know, a black Brooklyn hairstylist. So I was looking for a hairstylist to do my hair. So I decided, you know what, let me just go to like Instagram to see if there's any stylist that I can find. So I found a stylist. I checked her book. And she said, okay, on her page, book, book down there. So, okay, so I clicked the link and I booked and I saw that she had open appointments for 4th of July. So I went ahead and I booked for 2 p.m. So I got there like around maybe like 1.30, 1 1.40 the latest because I was looking for a park, which my appointment is 2 o'clock. I'm not late or anything like that. But so when I got there, I was like, hey, I opened the door. I knocked on the door. I was like, hey, I have a 2 o'clock appointment. She was like, I don't have no bookings for 2 o'clock. Are you at the right place? Because there's different places in here. Whole freaking attitude. So then I was like, yeah, I'm booked at the right place. I'm at the right place. So I go ahead and I went in there and she was like, where did you book? Like, when did you book? Like, and she's just like scrambling, checking her phone. Like, I didn't book any appointment for two o'clock. And there was like someone in her chair. It looked like she just started the hair. So I was like, okay. I showed her the bookings because the bookings gave me the address to get there. Like, once you book, you get the address. So the bookings gave me the address to get there. So when I get there now, I was like, she had a whole attitude. Like, she kept scrambling. Like, oh, I didn't book anybody. I'm like, sis. You can just give me back my deposit and I can go about my business. Like, you don't got to have a whole attitude. Like, and then she was like, oh, um, if you would like to go walk around. Fuck am I walking around? I don't live around here. I don't know any place around here. So I'm not walking around to go anywhere. So then after, I was like, oh, I can just sit and wait. Like, she's doing a client. And she's like, oh, it's going to take at least 30 minutes for me to be finished with her hair. Um, if that's fine with you. I said, that's okay. Um, I can sit and wait. So I'm sitting there and I'm waiting and stuff like that. And then, um... 
she had a whole complete attitude like her attitude just changed her mood swings it's just off everything is just off about this appointment but i was like you know what i'm not leaving i already paid my de deposit if you're gonna give up my deposit then i'm leave because he ain't cheap obviously and i'm doing i'm doing a regular traditional sewing like side part blah blah blah, blah, blah. so then the lady she was finished with the lady here like around let me say 3 30 so i sit there for like a whole hour and 30 minutes for my appointment so then she gets to me now and she's doing my hair she's dead quiet no interactions nothing at all she's just doing my hair doing my hair i was there until like 6 30 getting my hair done if i had an event on 4th of july best believe i missed it and i'm there doing my hair and i'm just like she's playing music rapping whatever she's doing behind my head whatever this had to be like the most uncomfortable appointment that i ever been to that i'm paying for and so best believe once i left that appointment delete the activate i'm never going back there at all and to top it off i had to come home and add some tracks to my hair because she told me she was like oh this is a lot of bundles it's not gonna fit cool fine your energy was already off i just wanted you to do my hair because i had no choice at this point because i have to go to work the next day day that's the friday and i can't go to work with a, with a hat because i'm in the office cool but homegirl didn't say a goddamn word the whole entire appointment like i'm the one who did something to her like i'm the one who booked myself like i was so confused like this brooklyn stylist and this black stylist to be exact they're out of control like this whole energy was off the whole entire appointment and that my energy was off as well so as fast as you can t start the faster you can finish and i can go about my business but best believe i'm never going back to you again yes hey guys come with me to get my hair absolutely destroyed at the madison marie color bar this is my first time going here and i will never be back this is what i asked for a simple balayage i genuinely do not know what to do Someone please help. Girl, I am so sorry that this happened to you. But I'm gonna be honest, you f***ed up when you went to Madison Reed. Madison Reed is basically a root touch-up single process color bar. They don't really do big transformations. My personal recommendation would to be to seek out a color specialist, someone who does all variety of color, or seek out someone who does balayage or blonding specifically. Best of luck to you. So this is me immediately after having my color done. And you can see it's like this very sort of over-processed Barbie blonde color. I absolutely hated it. Um, but I was afraid to, to do anything with this same colorist because I was like, she already fucked this up. Like, I'm not going to risk this. I'm going to go home and I'm going to just... Um, I'm gonna contact my stylist in the UK and see what she recommends for me to do because at least I trust her. The first time I washed my hair, I shit you not, so much of my hair came out. It was coming out in actual chunks and I was looking down and I, there was so much hair in my plug hole. I was terrified. You can see here my ends had started to break off um, and that was only the start of it. Every time I washed my hair over the next week, it just got worse and worse. Like I had tiny, tiny short bits that were literally a centimeter. All right, so boom. So this is a story on how a uh, big chop went totally wrong. This is the lady with her big, long alien fingers washing my hair. I was super upset. I was like, wow, where did my hair go? So right here, she's washing my hair. I did tell her that I wanted to do a big chop. I told her specifically I wanted it long enough so that way I can still do braids if I wasn't comfortable with the length. I also showed her a picture of the type of curly length that I wanted. And she just went and did her own thing. Wait, you just wait and see. Mind you, y'all, I'm telling her that I'm there specifically mm -hmm. for curly hair. And she keeps trying to convince me to straighten my hair, like to chemically straighten and relax my hair. So that way she can do the design, the style that she wants. It was crazy. This is what um, my hair looked like afterwards. And I actually went to my homegirl Candy so that way she could do the finger waves. Mm -hmm. That the lady could not even do. I went to that spot. The lady couldn't mm -hmm. even do finger waves how you cut my hair a specific way because you wanted to do a short finger wave style and then at the end you can't even ex execute the style that shit pissed me off y'all 
So I was in the back of the shop with my girl Candy. We was live crying about the situation, but you know, she got me. She was gonna fix it up. So now I'm gonna show you guys exactly what it looks like. I didn't take too many pictures, but boom, this is what it came out to be. You know, face card never decline. Okay, friends, we got to touch and agree that New York is not the one. <laughs> New York is not the place to play around with people's hair. New York is very diverse, even more diverse than other cities and states and all those things that I've done. You know, it is not a place to play with people's money in their hair. You either need to specialize in one specific thing and be damn good at it, or you need to have other people in your shop or your salons that can do the things clearly. But as always, guys, you know, this is a series. New York has a couple coming up, so stay tuned. And as always, guys, I appreciate you. And until the next video, bye.